Hey guys, Kelly told me to act normal today, so I'm gonna act normal <laughs> and introduce what we're cooking today. So, should we start over or just keep going? Why? So it's kind of goofy, okay. Just keep... So anyways, we're making a, uh, a pan roasted half chicken. There's a half chicken right there mm -hmm. with a pan gravy with a cauliflower puree and um, broccolini. With like with a lemon, lemon and garlic. And garlic. Yum. Mm. All right, so we're gonna show you guys how to make this. And by we, I mean him, because he only let me do like one thing. She cut the garlic. Yeah. So we're gonna go watch the last episode of Bly Manor, the haunting oh, yeah. of Bly Manor, and chow down on this delicious feast. So, if y'all like. Um, and are excited to see this recipe, please like this video and we will continue doing more. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. You're such a dork. <laughs> 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 Yum. Yeah. Mm. We win. <laughs> oh, you're already recording? Uh, yeah. All right, everybody. So, <laughs> to make this meal, you need a whole chicken, you need a head of cauliflower. This one's already cut up. And I got a little tray of broccolini from Trader Joe's. I have some stock. We bouillon. have turkey stock. We love to use this better than bouillon stuff. It is super easy, takes up like no space in the fridge. And uh, you can just shake it up with some warm water and you got some stock. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then some onions these are leftover onions that we'll use for this today and then we have some garlic oh. um those, those are the basics and i'll show you what else you need along the way sounds um, good so first we got to bone the chicken i know that sounds funny to some of you guys but it's no laughing matter <laughs> and what we're going to do is take it and we are going to first cut off the breast to have it and then we're gonna cut the bones out of the dark meat. So what's cool about this dish is you have the skin on and you have white meat here, and you have dark meat over on this side. So what you get is crispy, crispy skin on both sides. You get the super juicy, tender dark meat as well as some delicious, tender chicken breast in the same piece. It's gonna be one piece, half a chicken. Yum. Right. So first, you gotta get yourself a sharp knife. A boning knife. So this is the boning knife. Again, but stop laughing. It's not funny. You're such a dark. And you cut down the left side of this little ridge bone right here. So I know this is probably your right side, but it's my left. So you're gonna cut down all the way to the ribs. There's the rib cavity in there. And then you cut through oh. the bone right there. And then you want to go basically just right along the ribs. Right along the ribs. And I don't do this all the time, so I'm not a professional, but um, and you find the joints and you're going to have to cut through the joints. So Kelly told me that my board's sliding around a bunch and it looks real funny. Here's a little trick. Get a damp cloth, put it down. You put your board on top of it. And now, only the big cutting board will <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so, anyways, continue cutting around the bones until you get your half chicken. Okay. So you got the chicken breast here, the thigh bone here, leg bone here, and then you got the wing here. So we're gonna do something neat with this wing, but Gonna, real neat. Yeah, real neat. <laughs> so what you want to do is you basically cut along on the bottom side, skin side down, cut along the bone. Okay? So, and do the same thing here. Cut along the bone this way too. And you're just going to cut around the bone to where all that you have left is the meat bone. You take your knife and then just cut it off. You don't need that skin and meat at the bottom there, so. You got another tiny little bone under there. Let's cut that bad boy out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do the same thing with the 
the thigh, oop, our oven's ready. Rest. And this is the leg and the thigh meat. And when we put it in the pan and we fry it up, it's just gonna be a half a chicken like this. But we still have this wing right here. So we gotta get rid of that. So. <clears throat> <laughs> okay uh, so anyways we um have cooked whole chickens a couple of times before but it's kind of nice because we are in the process of trying to eat a little healthier and we're going to the gym quite a bit now so you know getting that new year's resolution started before it even uh hits and so we're just trying to up our protein and veggie, lower our carb and all that good stuff. So this is a really good meal for that. So a whole chicken can cook, you know, or can feed two people and then maybe a little bit more or two people. Um, and ch whole chickens are normally pretty affordable. Yeah, this was 10 bucks. That's and really it's gonna good. be a big portion. Yeah. He won't yes. give me anything yes. to do. Yes. He doesn't trust me to even cut up some onions. So, well, no, you can totally get the broth, the Cauliflower? Yeah. Done. What do I want so, me to do with cauliflower? You don't want me to see it? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pan, cook it, get some color on the uh, garlic, mm -hmm. and then put it in the oven and get more color on it. Okay, so cut up the garlic first. Yes. Okay, I can do that. I'm gonna use yeast knife. We're gonna take, and he said to chop off the end, and then to pop it. Pop right. it like you mean it. And then, <gasps> looky there! It actually works. Wow, babe. Oh. Wow. You are so talented. I'm afraid I'm like cut my freaking finger. That actually does work really well. So I used to always, that? yeah. Oh. I always used to just cut off the end and the tip and then peel. So? Not just the tip, the end and the tip. Yeah, the end and the tip. Um, yeah, and sometimes it would take a while, you know? That's why your trick is actually really useful. Um, you guys can, should let us know oh, in the comments down below what other sort of meals that you've been wanting to do. That'd be cool. Challenge Scott to um, making some meals. Sorry you can't see my face. I don't know what the heck I did with my tripod. I gotta find that. Um, <laughs> I got a little moldy bit on that one. Anyways, uh, let us know in the comments down below what kind of cooking videos y'all wanna see. Um, we're also like throughout my vlog just doing our random like nightly meals. Not every meal is like extravagant, but um, Scott will cook like one nice meal a week probably. Yeah. And this is this week, so yeah. But let us know what you guys have always wanted to see being cooked and Scott can cook it for you. Just kidding, I don't know if he can. You guys should write in the comments that you want him to see him make a chocolate molten lava cake. Chocolate molten lava cakes are my favorite thing in the world. I'll make you one from Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah, those are really great. I love the Trader Joe's molten lava cakes. Those were my jam when I was pregnant. We're almost ready to season this chicken. And I'll show you guys what we do. This garlic doesn't have to be a certain way, right? Nah, just chop it up. Oh, you can even leave for the cauliflower. You need to leave these as cloves. And oh. then for the broccoli, we'll chop some up. So more than that? Two more? So yeah, just maybe one more for the- Broccoli? Broccoli and, and the rest for the cauliflower. I am not a professional cutter, if you couldn't tell. Thanks so much for letting me cut garlic. I know it's <laughs> killing you inside. I know. I could cut it way faster. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. You Remember, guys should also... You're not cooking unless you have your little bevy out. As long as you're 21. Yeah. Or older. Um, I feel like I really need my tripod. Um, okay. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. I'm gonna go get my tripod as soon as I'm done chopping this garlic. But y'all should leave us some comments in this 
videos or some questions in this video and we can answer some questions in the next video. Yeah. So one of the questions we received last um, video was how we met, the story on how we met. Yeah. So we actually met on Bumble. Yeah, fun, right? Um, and our first date was on 4th of July, right? That's true. It was a good first date. We went out to lunch, we went to a pool party, and then went to the carnival and watched fireworks. Yeah, uh, so that's how that. we, that was our first date. So dating apps. And then she just wouldn't leave me alone after that. That's just not kidding. true at all. That's not true. Anyhow, food, chicken right. time. You ready? Yep. Okay, so. We did chicken last time. I know we're doing chicken again. Last time we just did the thigh. So remember now we have the breast and the thigh and we even have the little drumstick from the wing. So, so cute. what you do with the chicken skin side is you gotta heavily season it. I'm like stuttering. You gotta season it heavily <laughs> with salt. And what that's gonna do is one, it's gonna make it taste delicious. Two, it helps pull the moisture out while this is pan frying. Yeah, and you just use like a regular like sea salt. Yeah. And um, we just keep ours in these little containers, which I think you got from Amazon, right? I think so. Yeah, we'll leave one listed down below for you guys. But we really like these to like, kind of get our salt out of yeah. and whatnot. They just make it really easy. I love to use my, I love to pinch salt. Yeah. So instead of like uh, shaking it. Yeah, you end up over seasoning it less. Yeah, I don't Except know how much i always the shaker. over season. <laughs> so you don't put pepper on this side, okay? okay. But you do put pepper on the underside. Okay. okay. Alrighty, so we threw in, put a little bit of olive oil. We just chunked up, large chunked up the onion and garlic in with the cauliflower to just kind of roast a little bit, or saute a little bit, and then we're gonna put it in the oven to roast to make our puree. Right? Yep, and it doesn't need to be here long. You just wanna toss in the oil and make it Nice and coated. Oh, there goes there goes the clove. Ooh. We can rinse that off and pop it back in there. You need to pop it back in there. So, you know, just like everything. Oh yeah. I don't know. Season as you go. So put some salt, salt in there. And a little pepper. Always pepper. Wait, wait, we need to get some new pepper. Or yeah, refill that guy. Some cloves in yeah. There. But, yeah. Can you call it corns, not cloves? Uh, peppercorns. Yeah. You are bad. So bad. <laughs> Alright, so now, coated, sizzling, just pop it in there. We're going to leave it in there around 425. Just enough to get some color on it. Cool. While we're doing other stuff. Maybe things. Who knows? <laughs> We will list um, the pots and pans. Oh, we got some other comments about um, a good like knife set and cook cooking utensils and stuff. And Scott will do that in the next video because I didn't give enough heads up for him to talk about it in this video. But we do really love all clad pans and um, cast iron pans. So I will list some of those down below. The cast iron pans are an affordable option. The all clads are pretty expensive, but they'll last you like forever. Right, Scott? Totally. Cast iron, I used to not like it so much. It's kind of a pain to keep it seasoned, I heard, but cast iron is awesome. It's actually my yeah. preferred pan these we days. We cook everything in it. We cook yeah. our eggs, eggs. we Once cook. it's good and seasoned, yeah. you get, it's like non-stick, it's awesome. It's uh, so the big thing is you just don't use soap on it. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, right? You just, but you just wipe it clean, mm -hmm. and that's what seasons it. Yeah, and we have like a little like, we do have like a little scrub brush when stuff gets bad, but the key is to clean it pretty quickly yep. so that it doesn't like sit and get crusty. But yeah, our cast irons have been our go-to. So I'll list them down below so you guys can um, check those out and add one to your collection if you don't have one already. And then Scott will work on a good knife guide set because all of his knives are like... The fancy. We'll leave them listed down below. If you have like a someone in your family that's a really awesome cook, um, then you might it could be a really great Christmas gift or gift, birthday gift, whatever. But they're probably I think I looked at some of them on Amazon and they're like two to three hundred dollars for one knife. But again, if you take care of your knives, they'll last a really long time and 
Did you tell them? It's one of those investments. What? Did you tell them about these knives? I told them about this one, the, yeah. the deboning knife. When we were in Japan last year, last December, yeah. we got these knives from the fish market. Yeah, his and his. yeah, I think that one says my name, right? That but one says not, your name? Not right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's close enough. Yeah, we we spelled Sukoto the same. Sukoto and Kili. K B. K Li. Ri. That's a R I. Because there's no L in Japan. Anyways. In the Japanese neat. language. So yeah, that was really cool. But we will, um, in the next video, Scott will come up with like a affordable knife set that he recommends. And we'll leave that listed down below for you guys. But in the meantime, those are some of his recommendations so far. All right, so I got my chicken. I got a lot of salt on top and salt and pepper on bottom. So the whole goal is to put the skin side down and you want the skin to cover the whole thing. So you kind of pump it up like that, right? Pump it up. Plump it up. So then you want to put it down and just be really careful. In a really hot Some cast iron pan with the, the pan. oil. You, can, you know it's you hot. Put butter in it or just oil? Well, oh. just olive oil. You know it's hot because of the, the way that it feels. And um, <laughs> don't stick your finger on it. And don't stick your finger on there. You can hear it sizzle. And remember, the skin is going to shrink up just like last time. So you want to... You know, get the meat kind of plumpy in there. So this one we're gonna do opposite direction to make room in this little pan. And put it down gently. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are gonna hang out here for a little while at like medium high heat. They're just gonna <coughs> hang out. And the skin is gonna crisp up. And after that, we're gonna flip them over Put the bottom for just a couple minutes and pop it in the oven and let it finish. Cool. We're gonna make a pan sauce. So you pop it in the oven so that you kind of like don't overcook it too much in the pan. Because it, it provides it more of an even heat and mm -hmm. it kind of bakes it, roasts it to finish mm -hmm. it. Because you want to use high heat to get a crispy sear, mm -hmm. but if you use high heat all the way through, it's gonna overcook your chicken. I'm a I'm a chronic overcooker of chicken, but I actually don't mind overcooked chicken. <laughs> Fun fact. Anyway. She's easy to cook for. Oh, I forgot. I have the little chicken legs I'm going to put in there. Where are you going to put them? I'm just going to pop them in the pan. Okay, pop wow. them in. Pop in those little wingies. Sounds good. And then he's got some broccolini cut up here with some lemon. Lemon zest with lemon on broccoli is a game changer. Also, if you're buying broccoli instead of broccolini, you are really missing out. Fun fact, broccolini oh, yeah. is not related to broccoli. That's correct. It's most closely related to ruta, ru... Rhubarb? No. Rutabaga. Ruta, no, Ruta, it's awakening. that thing. <laughs> it's that thing. I'll get a picture and show you guys what broccolini is actually most closely related to Chinese broccoli. It's like a hybrid between Chinese broccoli and broccoli, but it's more closely related to this, which looks like spinach to me, but it's a Chinese broccoli. Fun facts for y'all. Always have an insane amount of vegetables like this on our counter. Well, we always have a lot of vegetables, but not this much. This is all for Thanksgiving on Friday. We're cooking a Thanksgiving meal on Friday instead of on Thursday. Um, Y'all ever bought like a, bro or a Brussels sprout stock from Trader Joe's? They always have them. I never have, but Scott decided to try it out this time. They're kind of fun. Fun. Anyway, Scott wants to show you his favorite drink and how he makes it for your segment of cocktails with Scott. So we're gonna like, so, you ready? <laughs> All right, hey guys. I'm gonna make an old fashioned here for you guys. Okay, so the ingredients in old fashioned. Orange, I like to use clementines, they're smaller and easier. Some good cherries, bourbon, bitters, and I use agave syrup. Those lemons are not for this drink. Okay. So what we're gonna do is first take some bitters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, how, what kind of bitters are those? I did, I got an orange Angostura bitters. Okay. And then just like a dash of syrup, not too much. Agave. Agave. I'm gonna take one cherry. Boom. And then I'm going to 
Okay, one piece of orange, maybe a little bit more. And then we're just gonna put this all in there. It's kind of a shortcut, easy cheater way. Then you muddle it and just mush it about. Ice in there right now. Because if I put the bourbon in first and then put the ice in there, it's So genius you are. So this is a Maker's Mark bourbon. Cheap, easy. So I just pour it up like that. And take whatever you want to mix it. I got this thing right next to me, so I'm gonna use it. And with an old fashioned. Stirred, not shaken. Stirred, not shaken. Alright, give it a real, real good stir. Scott really doesn't have very good bartending um, tools. We're gonna need to get that soon. And then. You want to really fancy glasses that Kelly got me for Christmas? from William Sonoma. These awesome. are some, some orange around the rim. Mm -hmm. And then, tasty. And you pour it out into there. Yum. Oh, look at that. What do you know? A perfect pour. Cherry in the boat. Cherry boat. So beautiful. Taste test. Just tested. how I like it. Scott approved. <laughs> We flipped over the chicken. Nice and nice crispy. And crispy. So this. Looking good. Yeah. So now it's been over, it's been on here for like I don't know. A couple minutes. Two minutes on this side. In the oven. We really need to clean our oven. And then we pull this out. Oh, uh, maybe a few more minutes. Okay. Sounds good. So the broccoli is going on. You just put broccoli in there. Did you put the garlic broccoli. in it yet? No, no garlic yet because a little bit of olive oil. it's hot and garlic burns easy. So. At 350 degrees, 350 Ooh. degrees. What a memory you got. See, I learned. So, what do we do with everything we cook? We season as we go. We season it. <laughs> All right, how's your, um, how's the collie doing? Cauliflower, looking good. Maybe a couple more minutes. Okay. Ooh, it smells take delicious. Take the chicken and, uh, well, the chicken is resting. Sounds good. So in there we're going to put some Trader Joe's onion salt, which is probably one of my favorite seasonings from Trader Joe's. It's really, really good. Trader Joe's has some awesome cheap seasonings because seasonings are really expensive at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And Trader Joe's are like $2.99, all of them. So I already put a little bit of salt. Oops. Oh I yeah. I do this. That's right. <laughs> so Oops. I would have put more on it because that onion salt is so good, but yeah, we're just gonna just toss this around for a couple of minutes. Then we're gonna put the uh, lemon garlic in it. And the garlic. Put a little bit of the broth in there, just like a splash. Just a splash. A splash. And then some Good lemon. Stuff. That's where these lemons went. Lemon on your broccoli, if you've not tried it, is game changing. Are you gonna put some zest in there too, please? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Let's take this. Why wouldn't you take it on a used one? Um, it's kind of hard to use on a zester. Okay. So this is a microplane. Micro. It's awesome. You can grate Parmesan cheese with it, mm -hmm. nutmeg. It's really, really zest. sharp because I've tried sharp. to gar Don't. grate garlic on it and I nicked my finger. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Must suck. <laughs> yeah, it did so, actually. Yeah, so you just run it across there. You can get these on Amazon too. So they the make zest. Them in different shapes and sizes. The zest has all the flavor in it. So you just oils. need a little bit of it. But you don't want to get to the white because the white can be kind of bitter. So yeah. you just want that top layer of zest and you'll get more pack flavor punch for you. So then you just pop it on there. Cool. Now, cocktails with Kelly. And by cocktails with Kelly, I mean wine. So, my favorite is Mayomi. That's my favorite wine ever. But I was at Trader Joe's and... I picked up a couple of new Pinots. First of all, this is our little bar cart area from West Elm. And, hi. Um, but, this is the wine that I picked up. Or I picked up all three of these, but this is the one I'm trying today, and I actually really like it. So, I, I pick wine by the um, picture, because that's just what I do most of the time. <laughs> so, that's... Cocktails with Kelly. Oh. 
cauliflower's out. See, it's got some nice color. So the roasted garlic. So colorful. Almost more importantly, but equally importantly, I guess, is this chicken. Crispy chicken. We're you know it's done because of the way chicken. it's poked. I never know how people poke that. Isn't it a thing where, like, if you poke this, it's the same feeling as, like... That's more like steaks, like the oh. medium, rare, well, whatever. Got you. Chicken, you just gotta... You just gotta know, you know? I don't know. Um, internal don't temperature touch. of 165 mm. degrees is what you're going for to be safe. Okay. Take your chicken off, let it rest, and while you're letting it rest, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take all this juice in here and all that flavor, and we're gonna make a sauce with it. But first... We are going to take garlic. And garlic and put it in a blender. All right, so. Put that camera down in here, check this out. Okay. So you got all that bro or cauliflower in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid on and we are going to also put a little bit of broth in there because probably won't blend without it. We're not gonna use all of it though because some of this broth is gonna be for our pan sauce that we're gonna make. Boom, okay. So, start low. I didn't film while he was making the puree as he added one little slab of butter and a little bit more salt. Some pinch of salt. And you have a great replacement for mashed potatoes. Yeah, make a pan sauce real quick. Okay. Take all those drippings from your chicken, mm -hmm. right? Get it hot. Okay. Wait for it to start sizzling. All right. All right, so it's sizzling. Wait for it to get to a really good sizzle. Okay. So you're gonna deglaze the pan? And then you deglaze the pan with some stock. And then you let that cook down. That's gonna come to a boil and it's gonna get all that flavor off the pan and boil it into the sauce. Okay. Okay. So this has reduced probably in half. Why are you using that and not like a wooden spoon? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so then you turn the heat off. You want the heat to be off when you put the butter in because what the butter is gonna do is make a creamy sauce, but if it's too hot, it breaks into the butter fats and then the milk solids. Oh. And then it's like a, a weird sauce. So if you ever seen your sauce like separate, hmm. that's because your butter and milk the butter fats got too separated? hot. Yep, Interesting. It's separated. So I'll take a little fork to kind of- Do you ever put flour in it? Around. You can. But like a roux, kind of, but to can, thicken but it. You don't really need to with this one. It, need, it should be a thin sauce. Got it. And the butter will kind of bring it all together. So who knew you could make full chickens in here and make a sauce all in the same pan? And oh, wow. we made an egg scramble in that this morning. We sure did. <laughs> Get yourself a cast iron pan and thank us later. Decided to do two separate plates just because of the flavor profiles. The sauce. <laughs> the sauce. So we got a dollop of the cauliflower puree, which you guys can't taste it, but it is so <laughs> freaking delicious. Oh. Oops. <laughs> All right. And then, broccolini. Some broccolini over here. I'm so hungry. Yum. That lemony, garlicky, delicious broccolini. Okay. I found a piece. Yum. And then, mm. instead of putting the sauce on top of the chicken, I put it underneath because we got the crispy skin. This will be my oh, plate that I licked. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, thanks. That makes sense. I wouldn't even have thought to do that. You're so smart. And then, some chicken. Wow. Mm, yum, look at that chicken. So good. So you're just adding a little bit of blackening seasoning just for? Just for color. It'll give It'll some flavor too. It'll also be tasty as heck. Oh yeah, no doubt. Cool. But that way, it's just pretty, wow. Just wow. Wow. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna film reactions. I already ate a piece of broccoli, not gonna lie. Said it was good. It's so good. So I don't know. Mm, mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Two thumbs up. <laughs>
I was telling him, this is what's called a mukbang or a mukbang, whatever you call it. But people love to watch other people eat. This cauliflower puree is. It's bomb. Like, the more you roast you it. miss mashed potatoes. And the more roasted that garlic gets, the better your cauliflower puree is gonna get. Mm. So I'm super right. excited about this chicken. This is actually my favorite thing to cook. It has so much flavor. Are you gonna go breast or thigh first? I'm going thigh. Me too. I'm crazy about this dark meat. It's crazy about it. So we get some of that sauce on there. This is a big bite. Excuse my manners. Me too. Mm -hmm. mm. You left the oven on. <laughs> she hates when I leave the oven on. Why wouldn't I? That's really good. It's really good. Wow. The mm -hmm. sauce is really creamy. It's creamy, but it's not like thick. Mm -mm. It's but definitely it's really not rich. healthy. Mm -mm. <laughs> A lot of butter and, and um, all the fat that cooked out of the... The breast is really good. ...of the skin is in the sauce, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah. Broccoli is still my favorite. The cool thing about cooking chicken with the skin on is the skin has all the flavor, all the fat. Chicken's really lean. And when you cook it with the skin on it, even if you don't eat the skin, all that flavor seeps into Jeez, the chicken in breast while yeah. you're cooking it. Yeah. But like, why not eat the skin? It's so damn good. It is, if you're really healthy, I guess. Mm. Not, Cheers but. to a wonderful meal. Thank you, Look my love. <laughs> So let us know if you guys try to cook this at home. It seems that, like intimidating, I guess, but it's really not that hard. Yeah. Deboning a chicken can be a little difficult. But you know, you can find sometimes if you're at the grocery store and you see chicken breasts with the skin on or chicken thighs with the skin on, yeah. you could totally, instead of using a half chicken and doing this yourself, you could just use the chicken thigh like we did last time. Yeah. And, um, or a lot of times the butcher can cut it for you like oh, this. Sure. So. You can just ask them at your local grocery store if they'll cut the chicken yeah. for you. They might not debone it like this, but a lot of times you can find a half chicken with the skin on and you can, uh, you know, cut it from there. Yeah. And it's just like a fun thing to do, like, because obviously we're all in quarantine still, so we can't yeah. go like on dates. I don't know. Can kind of, but I mean, honestly, it's a fun, entertaining thing to do at home to cook a really nice meal. And this thing costs like nothing 10 bucks for the chicken 10 bucks for the chicken two bucks for the broccolini and two bucks for the yeah cauliflower less, head less than 20 bucks for all of this and this is would probably cost you 30 bucks a plate at a restaurant 100 percent. so challenge yourself have fun cook by yourself cook with your friend cook with your significant other your dog i don't care but mm. it's awesome when so, you would love this when you would love this she's down below us right now hoping I would drop some half Probably sleeping, wouldn't. half not. It was all me. Anyways, thanks guys so much for watching, and see y'all in our next one. Thanks, y'all.